Hello everyone, it is Professor Oleander. In a few days, uh, just got off my last stint with work, and I've got a few days off now, so I figured I would make some more videos. There was actually a pretty sizable update for Railroader, and I figured I would cover that. This update also had some controversy tied around it. A uh, particular YouTuber took it upon himself to um, uh, let's see, what's the word? He went and did a live stream about this update and basically we got some new locomotive models and this particular live streamer or this particular YouTuber he is known for um, getting drunk and doing live streams. I guess is probably the best thing, the better way to say that. Uh, he is known for getting inebriated, going out, doing a live stream. And uh, in that live stream, while he was looking at the new locomotives, he um, he basically called the modeler stupid and idiot. I think moron got used, called the work garbage, and, you know, people have been defending him, they're like, wow, he was drunk, and he's just very passionate, and I'm like, yeah, this isn't the first time he's done this, though, you know, he's he's gone into this game, and he's called stuff garbage before, and I'm like, it's an early access game, you didn't have to pay for the locomotives, it's not like a certain other game, <clears throat> that um, likes to, you know, gouge people $40 for DLC that's half finished, um, yeah, it's not cool. And the reason why I'm really mad about this is because this individual is the face of another company that is in the process of making a, uh, an age of steam game and they were actually doing really good work with it. Um, and during this stream, some of his friends who I know that are working on this game, they kind of doubled down on the stuff and they blamed games like this for um, causing people at their museum to come up and say, well, they're misrepresenting stuff. And it's like, first of all, these aren't study level locomotives. I don't think that they ever said that they were going to make them study level locomotives. So I don't know why you're getting bent out of shape about it. If somebody misinterprets what they're hearing on the internet, that's life, dude. I mean, seriously. I mean... I've been around this stuff for a long time and the people will come up to you and they will say the damnedest thing and it's like and you're going to blame this on a video game? I mean, come on. And these these guys are saying that there's they want to educate people and I'm like, yeah, you want to educate them by calling them stupid and idiots and morons and all that sort of stuff and it's like, yeah, I get you. What's the saying in vitro veritas? So, yeah. So, that being said, and this will be the last thing I'm going to say about this, um, they were in the process of making a game, and um, <clears throat> sad to say, I will not be playing their game, I will not be supporting them, I will not even mention their game on this channel anymore. Um, some people can say that I'm just being offended for the modelers. The modeler himself had said that... Uh, he wasn't really offended. He said they're valid criticisms. And I'm like, well, that's not really the point. The point is this is this dude is the face of a company of a rival. Well, I don't want to say rival company. They're not really. But he's the face of another company. That's like, it's totally unprofessional. And it's like, I just don't want to support people like that because I think it's toxic. I think that it's, it's uncalled for, unwarranted. Um... If you can't be professional enough to not get drunk and go on stream and then, you know, talk out of your ass, basically, then you don't need to be doing it. Not especially whenever, you know, you're the head of this project. Um, yeah. Anyway, that's all I have to say about that. Um, I won't be playing that game. I'm not going to mention it anymore. I am not supporting them financially anymore. And it's probably not a big deal for them. I'm sure they're going to make a great game. But, um... Uh, I'm going to miss out on it, and that's all i got to say about that. So, moving on to the next things. Um, 
we had an update, as I said. It was actually, what's today? Today is Wednesday. Is today Wednesday? Yeah, today's Wednesday. Um, this update was Saturday. There's actually been a hot fix since this came out. Where are these cars going anyway? These are going to Andrews. So I need to pick these cars up here. They're going to have to make two stops and like it. <clears throat> Let's see. I need to put that right there. What I'm going to do is I'm going to send my... I've got a train over here waiting. I'm, I'm having a hard time talking because pollen is like terrible right now. Spring came a little bit early and pine pollen has been horrible and I'm pretty sure that I'm allergic to oak pollen now. Okay, so let's do this. Which, which switch is stopping them? That one. So where is that switch? Okay, that should give him a clear. Let me go and see. And I'll, I'll talk about that. Yes, and that was them. Um, okay, updates, 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 updates. One thing I need to check before we get into that is... Um, what was I looking for? Oh, yeah. Whittier Sawmill. Okay, they're still holding, so, alright, we got plenty. Still trying to get this save sorted out. I'm probably not going to do too many more videos with this one. Uh, I'm actually thinking about starting a new save and completely starting over because I've got so many map mods now, and uh, I want to try and go at the railroad a little bit differently because they were adding updates along the way, and things changed, and the way that industries got service changed, they added more. So it was like I was set up for one way, and then, yeah. Anyway. So, updates. We were talking about updates. So let me go through here, and I'll, I'll just briefly talk about them. Uh, the Atlantic Locomotive Works now offers three new steam locomotives, a T-22, an A-23, and F-71. The T, the T-22 is another 10-wheeler. Let me actually... You know what, let me go in the sandbox, and I'll just spawn them for you. So let's see here, we want the new locomotives. They're, they're not by a number, so it's the 10-wheeler, it's the American, and then the Santa Fe. 71. Place these guys right there. Let's just apply the handbrake so they don't roll away. So here we are. We've got some new ones here. I don't remember what these were modeled after. Uh, what type of locomotive. I know this one's an, an ABBA. A, B, and A. Uh, this is a later style American it's a big locomotive. Uh, matter of fact, let me. You can see tall drivers there. Let me stand up right beside it here. You see how it's got the big drivers. Uh, I've actually been around one of these. They are massive engines. This particular one, I think, was built in 1910. The one that I was around, I believe, it was the last one that was built, and it was 27. If it wasn't one of, if it wasn't the last one, it was one of the last. Um, but yeah, I think I want to say 1927 was when the the last of the 440s was built. They they do okay. Um, these are mainly for like lighter trains that you need to go out and get and get it going. Like if you've got I don't know 10 cars or something like that, and you want to boogie, uh, these are very light. Uh, I don't even, it doesn't even have the is it where is it 189,000 pounds so just under 100 tons it's a it's a light locomotive the problem is it's got tall drivers so it, you really can't sit down and grunt with it the Santa Fe on the other hand uh, this is the 
I have a love hate relationship with tin tin driver locomotives, and it's mainly because they're just I, I've never seen the use for them. I know that there are several railroads that use decapods and they use these two ten twos, but I'm like so it, eight drivers are just so much more functional. They all serve a purpose. I'm not gonna get into it right now. I do know that one of the downsides of this locomotive is if you look here on the center driver, that's where the, all the weight is. These locomotives had a tendency to waddle. Um, they would shimmy going back and forth. They were under speed restrictions of about 35 miles an hour. Um, because I don't have another good alternative to this locomotive other than the Berkshire, and the Berkshire cannot handle hills, uh, I will be using this locomotive in the future probably in this railroad I don't know like I said I'm wanting to go ahead and start another railroad over from scratch and um, basically go from there so that's sort of where we are with that one uh, and probably the next video that you're gonna see is me starting a new railroad from scratch uh, just because uh, yeah I, I just want to get want to start over again and do some things a little bit differently we'll we'll keep going with this one though uh in the future but the next video is probably going to be the new one so the c55 and old wooden caboose models are updated the old wooden caboose is now colorable now i'd have to go back and look i don't know exactly and i haven't really looked on discord either to see what got updated i know the most prominent thing is I'm pretty sure the number boards I can't remember if they were white before or not but I know they did m update some things um, yeah not 100% certain but uh, these guys got updated revamped the tree grass plant rendering river and roadbed edges are now more natural too I did notice as soon as I spawned in that the grass looks better um, added customers at Nantahala, Hewitt, and Wesser, and we'll take a gander at that right now. And yes, I am still using the enhanced map. Uh, let's see. Oh, one of the key things about this one is now that you can jump to places. So Nantahala got a new industry. It's actually that little yellow spur right there. So this is this is one of the problems that's happened in this update is when you go to spawn in the free camera, uh, it spawns you beneath the world, and I'm sure that they're going to get that fixed. So this is the new industry here in Nantahala. I don't know why I opened that one. We want this one here. So we've got, I think that's this. One. No, it's up a little bit further. Okay, Nantahala Public Delivery, and then over here, we've got, uh, let's see, Nantahala Power and Light, and it's, uh, it's off the trestle here, where am I looking, where am I? Okay, so that long track that goes over the river, yeah, it's on the other side, okay, so we got that right there. So they added all that. They added some stuff to Hewitt and Wesser as well. Revamped water and coal consumption usages. Usage is significantly lower and is governed by the reverser and throttle position. And um, I have not had a chance to really look at that too much. Uh, I know that it is a, at least a little bit... Uh, less than it was before um, I'm glad that's about all I can say about it is I'm glad that they finally they finally did go in there and and change it because it was a little little bit aggravating Let's see there's three cars I'm gonna have to back this train up a little bit I didn't I put it too close put her too close Right, let's see here. What's the next one? Added the end and roster window. That's shift R. Isn't it? Open with R. There you go. So this is the engine roster for my railroad. You can follow. You can inspect. So I can pull them up like that. So that's a quality of life thing. And what else did we 
add. We add a performance enhancement related to car movements. That I don't know. I, like I said, I really haven't had a chance to play too much since the update came out. I'm just happy to see it. switch there and let's see the AI now warns when handbrakes are on or brake line is open I have noticed that uh, I was glad to see it I wish kind of wish that the AI would like when you give an AI a train they would go ahead and handle all that because you're kind of handing the train off to them that might be something that did they do at a at a later date uh, we'll see that and let's see here compass display at top of the screen is now more accurate and tracks directly with camera rotation so you I don't know if you can see that I can't remember what it did before I, I honestly never paid that much attention to it uh, let's see here added percentage graphic to tool tips for equipment load and fuel loaders uh, so if you look here you see the little circle there Basically, as your consumption goes over, uh, as you're using whatever material, you can see this little the little pie wedge opens up and shades in. Kind of handy. Uh, you couple that with now that they announce that they are running low. I think right now. Oops, wrong switch. Um, I th think it's twenty percent that they will announce that they're running low on fuel I know they do it at 10% as well so that was a handy thing let's see here added time to console messages so you see there there's timestamps on them now what else um, added shift click on engine in map to select I think the a, the enhanced map that I'm using allowed me to do that before, so that's not too new for me. Added add from train button to switch list. Let's look at that here in just a second. I, I'm thinking I'm gonna have to go back to company mode. Okay, the company mode here. First of all, before I forget, let's just delete these guys. And we want to go to company mode. All right, so switch list. That's the timetable. This is switch list. So add from train. I don't have a train crew, but that's that's the button here. Uh, added slash repair command to repair selected train. That's for host or sandbox. It used to be you had to go in, you had to put the the reporting marks and then underscore condition one to basically restore to 100%. And they've changed that now. So now you just go in and push slash repair. And... Um, Let's see. Updated car tag colors to more to be more evenly distributed across the railroad, and I can actually show you all of them in the map. These are all of the the colors now. They've given them, they've given them a little bit more variety instead of um, well, they're a lot more shades and they're a little bit more distinguishable. Some of them were very, very close to each other, and it was kind of hard to tell from a distance which ones needed to go where. And as you can see, we've got all the colors of the rainbow on this train, and they're in a little bit of mixed order. But, uh, yeah. So that's that. I'm actually going to put you in yard mode so that way I don't have to worry with you. Oh, there's a fusee there. i got to get rid of that. Um, let's see, what's the next one here? Adjusted default, post exposure and contrast customizable in the preferences window. Let's see here, I think it's on graphics. So yeah, you can do the post exposure here. 
which I think it was a 0.5. You can also do the contrast. Where it was. Um, fixed Ella trussel bus and abutments. I same they had done that before on an, on another place. Um, fixed overhead camera snapping to directly above car. I think I had mentioned that one before. I had a lot of trouble with that one where uh, the camera would just snap up like that. Like if it encountered anything. Alright. Let's go get this. And trying to think I want to do this a little bit differently can I are we clear we're not all right I'm gonna I'm gonna pull this one forward I'm actually going to bring my other locomotive down here to grab it I need to undo this handbrake first yeah I'm gonna come I'm gonna bring this forward bring my yard engine up here and I'm going to grab these off the back of it because I still got cars in Whittier that need to be uh, that need to be fixed okay the next one is fixed AI reading 25 mile per hour speed limit near Bryson East and Whittier Y uh, I think I've encountered that a few times where when it goes through the Y it will see that 25 mile an hour limit on the Y and it will slow down for it it's it doesn't happen all the time fix AI not keeping current speed when enabling road mode while moving in reverse that's another one I don't think that I've encountered I probably have and just never noticed it or never paid attention um, so yeah not sure about that one. I think I can get by there uh, we'll just grab it with this one see fix car tag overlay rendering behind water sometimes there I know that there was a spot in Silva where that happened um, I want to say there's I know there was another place that it was happening as well but I can't remember exactly where it was but Silva's right across from the paperboard company was where I was seeing it the most um, let's see the next one is fixed higher tree density causing trees to appear in places they shouldn't be they've worked on this a couple of times and I have to keep the tree density down because there's something uh, I don't know if it's because they haven't got the optimization right but if like if I go up on the tree density within 30 seconds my game will crash it's something to do with my graphics card. It just doesn't like it. I don't know if it's a memory usage thing or what, but it just, every time I do it, it crashes. Um, next one here. Fixed engines consuming coal when there's no water and vice versa. That's a biggie. Um, if you had an engine that you had controlled by AI and you used up all of your water, uh, it would keep the throttle open and it would burn up all your coal annoying bug glad that they finally fixed it let's see fixed mines loading too many cars when waiting sleeping this is another reason why I'm probably just gonna go ahead and start another railroad is because that particular uh, it, it, this is a double-edged sword because I was kind of setting I had all my stuff set up to where cars were going to be loading at a certain rate and then they changed the way that pulp would load and they changed the way that logs loaded it's like crap now I have all these cars sitting around and they're not loading as fast and now with the with the coal mine doing that it's like yeah it's it's we're getting into territory where I probably just need to start over which it's no big thing it's a, it's a little bit annoying, but I honestly want to rework this railroad anyway. I've got a, a better way of doing it. And I was, truth be told, this railroad was getting ready to be renamed anyway. And the more I've thought about it, it's more like, eh, let's just save that and just start a new railroad. How about that? Like I said, that'll be the next thing I do is just go ahead and 
to start a new one. I think you'll like the name for the new one. And that's all I'm going to say about that. Alright. Let's get this one here. Uh, fixed signal lenses appearing impossibly dark in fog. I have run into that before. Where you just can't see them because it is so dark. We don't need to go into the yard. I can go ahead and send these guys on up to Bryson. That's where they're headed. 30, and let me just make sure there shouldn't be anything in their way. Silva, Silva, Silva. Straight in. No, no, they're not either. We're going this way. This is the one thing that I love about this map. Is it okay? That'll stay. Or will it? No. Is that I can do all this stuff from from the map and not have to to bounce back and forth? How many tons have they got right now? 2442. Okay. So we, we dropped a little bit and we gained more than we dropped. And then the last one is made water hatches more lenient in positioning below water columns and towers. And I have noticed that, that there is, there are way more forgiving than they were before. Uh, all right. So there was another hot fix update. Let me just look here. And it was just a hot fix for the customization window. Okay, so I'm going to let this train get out of the way. This train here, I need to go ahead and send him back a little bit because I need to pick up. Uh, we haven't actually heard. These are going to the sawmill, aren't they? Yes, they are. Perfect. So let's just go ahead and bring him on back here and drop these over here. I am going to have to make a run for logs here. I, matter of fact, I think I've got, I should have some cars. They are. They're loading. I think these cars are already loaded. I just need to get these cars here loaded. Make sure that they're, they're tagged where they need to be. Yeah. So that's been, that's that update. I really haven't done a whole lot with this, with more with this save, just because it's been kind of a cluster, uh, just because there's so many, so many things going on. Nantahala East. Why is there an approach on Nantahala East? Oh, I know why. I know why. I'm still getting used to this drop down. He is on an approach to Nantahala East because this. Doesn't matter, he's got to stop for the station anyway. As you can see, I got the pulpwood train, the massive pulpwood trains up here loading right now. These cars are already loaded, the white ones, because I haven't tagged them where they need to go yet. But uh, I've got this huge pulpwood train here ready. All right, you can slow down. I think I mentioned in the last video, I turned off CTC because it was easier to dispatch from the map now that I don't, uh, now that I have the enhanced map, it's just so much easier to throw switches and have to keep jumping back and forth to a CTC board. Send you straight. Like I said, we'll do a few more things in this save, and then, and then the next one will be the new railroad. So let's do that, and then we'll go ahead, and I'm going to tell him to couple, because this is why we have AI engineers now, and that's 
probably about 15 cars and we'll clear them for 20. That's actually not quite 15, that's more like, more like eight, so we'll take 10. One thing that would be nice, even though technically I know I'm supposed to be here watching it, is if, uh, if we would get a message to say, hey, we coupled. They're working on a lot more stuff for AI. One of them is basically you, you tell the AI where you want them to go and they, they route themselves there so you don't have to sit there and babysit them anymore. Alright. Let's see, this one was sent. And what I need to do is, I don't know, I'm still trying to get used to having this map. Alright, I forgot. I threw that switch because I wanted them to, um, I wanted them to stop because they were going to make their drop. But I dropped it in East Whittier, so now they don't, they don't have to. One thing I do need to go up here and do is, okay, I do have sawmill cars. I have a bunch of sawmill cars up here waiting. Yeah, I'm, I'm like getting behind on this railroad. This is basically a full-time job because I'm playing in one-to-one -one time compression. So, I mean, it is it is a full-time job and it's if it if I start at 4 o'clock in the morning and go until 4 o'clock in the afternoon, then I have spent 12 hours playing this game because I don't speed up time any. This the save that I'm on right now is actually geared more towards multiplayer. And I actually told some some friends of mine that I played with the other day, I was like, I will probably, I'm going to give this save file to them so that they can play with it. Because this is as many engines <laughs> as much as I have in this game. Um, this is more of a, this is geared way more towards multiplayer than anything else. How many cars are here? Five? Okay, there's enough to fit in there. or six. Yeah, there's enough. Okay. So I'm just going to go ahead and tell him to back up at 10. And then that'll be him then. And then the next one, while they're loading, is... Oh, we gotta go to Silva. Go. Yes, I know the menus there. I've forgotten. Wait a minute. When did they get? Wait a minute. Oh, they got serviced at eight o'clock, didn't they? I didn't even see it. Ah, crap. This is the other reason why I need to start over because I've gotten. Uh, that's annoying. I'm I'm running out of power. That's that's the problem that I'm facing with this save right now. Is that I've I'm legit running out of locomotives. I just don't I don't have enough power to continually service all this. Um, let me make sure that I don't have something turned on. Uh, it's not under this one anymore. It's under this one. This is the new rail loader tag. And it is... Last one, continuous delivery. Okay, I do have service off. Yeah, it, this is this is the extra cars that were due for interchange. Wonderful. I know that this string that's here in the middle, these were the ones that were there you notice these are the expansion sites these are for yards these are not pay a couple of these are the farm supply for Ella the Whittier expansion that's not pay this one is this one is this one is uh, these two right here a couple of those right in there the majority of those those are just uh, milestone expansions so what I need to do, because I've got all the switching over here that's got to get done, it never ends. 
I gotta get all these guys sorted. That's what I'm saying. Um, because the map mod came out later, uh, and it adds, I think I showed it in the last video, I believe. For I don't remember if I was in sandbox mode. I thought I was in company mode, but apparently you can't add it in sandbox and then it disappears when you go back into company mode. Um, you can go in and put the individual files in so that way they're, they're already there, but then it conflicts with the map mod. But basically it added another yard over here and that's pretty much where I'm at right now. That's why it's like, I achieved my goal for this save, which was uh, within 30 days, I had basically the entire railroad opened up. And that's been basically what I was shooting for. But because now that I've had all these other options for more tracks and stuff like that to make my life easier, because right now I have to carry these up to Dillsboro, it's just been... I'm at a point where this railroad's almost unmanageable, at least for one person. That's why I said I'm going to most likely give this save to some friends of mine and let them play it because um, this railroad actually makes a fair amount of money, but uh, this kind of puts a wrench in everything. And it's, it's to the point where it's like, I'm, get, I'm just tired of playing it because I've made it so convoluted. Well, not convoluted, it's just there's so much more to it now than, than when I had started playing it. And the rules have changed, and this has changed, and this has changed. And it's like, now I need to rethink how I was going to do it. So, yeah. I'm actually not going to go a whole lot further with this. And actually, now I can't do anything because I need to get all that mess over there sorted. Um, let me couple these up and then I'm probably going to go and do one more thing and then we'll probably call this video done and then the next time you see me we'll be with a new railroad. What else needed to be done? And this is the other thing, too. I don't have... Andrews hasn't even been... I haven't even sorted out Andrews. And you you guys know how I work. Interchange gets serviced at 4 o'clock. Usually I have everything moving around. I've had to send engines here, there, and everywhere. I haven't even been able to run uh, the other passenger train out just because there's been so much stuff going on. And I haven't even had a chance to go in here. It's just way too many moving parts. And I don't like it. So, let's see. Passenger train sitting there. Then, and the other reason is, if I go up here to Alarca Junction, the other reason is my, my other road freight is sitting here waiting on coal cars because they've got to go all over the place. So, I think it's time to let the SOL be SOL for a little bit and um, we'll start the new railroad and that'll be the next video that you see me in so later.